Which, ironically, the UK has great chocolate. Because you know in America, we put wax in our chocolate. Mm -hmm. In the UK, because of regulations, they can't. Really? Oh, yeah, girl. American chocolate is it's honestly not chocolate. It's a candle. Okay? It's disgusting. I've been eating candles? Dude, yes. Do not eat American chocolate. Really? I didn't know that. Girl. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Monet Exchange. And welcome back to The Pit Stop, the only official recap series of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 14. Today, we're joined by a girl that has made 2022 her absolute bitch. She is serving, she is living, and she's here to give us the joy, the glory that is Pangina Hill. Monet Exchange. Sawadee ka. Sawadee ka. My dear, how are you? I'm good. I miss you. I miss you. So happy to be here. I know, a RuPaul's Drag is pissed off, yes! right? What an honor. I feel like every couple of months we just fall in love with you for something different. Now it's UK versus the world. How are you feeling? I am feeling blessed. I am traveling the world. I'm receiving all these flowers and love. <laughs> and I just feel grateful to be here. And I mean, I'm booked until 2023, January. So I'm Must like, be nice. can't complain. Girl, after this gig, I don't know what's gonna happen. After the piss off is done, I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, please. I'm gonna pray for the best. Oh, no, I know you. <laughs> I am a little sneaky. <laughs> I know. <A> <laughs> Well, you know, you you went on UK vs. the World and you really showed everybody that you are that bitch. Like you, the looks, the 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 the, the, the talent. You are amazing. Thank you. What was it like for you competing against Drag Race legends, you know? I mean, Juju is like my idol. I know. Yeah. Like all of us. Most of the girls that I get to meet are you know, people that inspire me. So for me, it was surreal. Yeah. A lot of pressure because it was the first Thai girl and first oh, girl yeah. from Southeast Asia as yeah, well. Yeah. So, and being a judge as well. I was just gonna say, so you have judged Drag Race, now you've competed. Mm -hmm. Do you look at the competition differently? So I literally, I'm a reverse Brooklyn Heights and <laughs> I felt Heights. like I was going into it like a judge would. So yeah. I didn't really have a plan, but it came out on the show that I was hella strategic, uh -huh. and I'm okay with that. I love a strategic bitch. Mm. Like, I love someone who can look at me and I, I, don't, I can't tell what's going on, but you are dissecting me, you mm. are flipping me around, mm. you are putting me upside down, and you are, I love that. Are I, we uh, still talking about a competition? <laughs> <laughs> so in last week's episode, the queens competed in the lip sync SmackDown, mm. and it was bloody, it was scary, mm. but it was so good. Mm. And unfortunately, Jasmine Kennedy had to sashay away. Are you mm -hmm. sad to see Jasmine go? I am. And I feel like all the girls are so charismatic and talented yeah. this season. So that for me, I'm just like kind of sad. But after that lip sync, I was like, okay, yeah. I can see why she's going home. Yeah. And she wasn't as mad about it as I was during my elimination. <laughs> you had a very, <laughs> honestly, the craziest elimination in Dragon's history. I was <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Triggering. <laughs> <laughs> but also, but Jasmine Kennedy left that long mirror. I mean, we all know Jasmine is not short for words, and she left that long ass message. Yeah, that was a monologue in itself. <laughs> it was very long, but it's nice to see um, a positive message on the mirror sometimes. So. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that, I love it already. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So after this lip sync SmackDown, this like very traumatic episode, I, I think it's traumatic. Do you think the queens are relieved that they made it through? I think they are. Yeah. They kind of got a fire lit under their ass a little mm -hmm. bit by Rue, because you know, when Rue's mad, everyone has diarrhea. So I'm <laughs> glad that they woke up, had that little espresso and just wake the f up. I'm glad, but you know, one one more girl home, it's just closer to the crown. Especially on this season. Mm -hmm. If I had to bear through another episode with nobody going home, I'm literally gonna light, which no one kind of went home. No one went home on this. Anyway, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm, I'm gonna light, I'm lighting something on fire today. I don't know what it is. Maybe this wig, who knows? I think it's gonna lit on fire today. <laughs> But this has made Jasmine Kennedy, she has a place in Drag Race history. Yes, she does. She has now lip synced the most times in Drag Race. Six times, that's her record. Wow. No. But she's 50 50. She won three, lost three. So it's kind of mm. like, mm. mm. It kind of averages out. Well, the songs I mean? that she basically won, she can now do a tour with it. Mm -hmm. See, this bitch is. See, this bitch is. <laughs> maneuvering. But meanwhile, Bosco was very close to going home. Is that insane? Yeah. What do, do you think that this was a real reality check for Bosco? Like, bitch, I almost sashayed home. For her, I, I've always thought of her as a front runner. Everyone mm -hmm. was thinking that she's gonna be in the top as, yeah. as well. So for her to be that close, I feel like she gotta wake up. Yeah. Bring something new to that runway. Hello. Like, I, I feel 
insane that it's been, we saw it three weeks in a row, and spoiler alert, we're about to see it a fourth time, but. Silhouette? Girl. It's the same thing. Yeah. So the next day, Rue enters, mm -hmm. and he announces the maxi challenge, mm -hmm. and it's a rusical! I love rusicals! I love rusical too. Rusicals are so good. Mm -hmm. And they're doing the Moulin Rue. One of my favorite musicals of all time. Oh, is it really? Yes. Why? Christina Aguilera, Lil Kim and Maya, and Missy Elliott, uh -huh. and Pink. Pink, yeah. Iconic. Yeah. I became gay because of that music video. <laughs> so for me to watch a recreation of this would yeah. be so amazing, yeah. you know? Do you think that it's a good theme for a musical? Absolutely. Yeah. There's gonna be dancing, there's gonna be acting, there's gonna be feathers. <laughs> what sex. more do you need? Yes. And a lot of sex. A lot of sex, a lot of yes. sex. So of course, you won the most recent musical in Drag Race. Mm -hmm. What is the secret to doing well in a musical to you? You have to go all in, embody the character, and not be like not be afraid to look stupid. Yeah. Like literally, I went all in. I was in character the whole time, shaking, and I feel like you can't put yourself too much forward because that will compromise you getting into the character. You mm -hmm. have to be that character. You like you have to fully commit. Yeah. So once again, RuPaul allows the girls to choose their own roles, mm -hmm. and we all know how that always turns out. Drama. 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 Why do you think choosing roles leads to drama? Because there will be obviously a role that everyone wants and a role that has l less featuring. Yeah. And no one's gonna want a less featured role because yeah. then there's less airtime. Yeah. But then again, if the role has a lot of airtime and you f it up, Bitch. you gonna go home. If you are on stage too long, not doing anything, you look crazy. Boring. Boring as f you know what I mean? And there is no right or wrong answer for like having the biggest or shortest role, mm. but it, it always causes drama. Yes. And everyone is putting their feet down on the roles they want. Mm. No one seems like they're gonna budge. And mm. the big one is Bosco and Lady Karen, the bitch. I loved every second of this. The tension was so thick. You can cut it with a Ginsu mm. knife. Yes. It was good. It was good. They weren't budging an I inch. Know. I know, I know, yeah. I know. I'm definitely taken back by how stern Bosco's being, because Bosco yeah. pretty much has been pretty passive this season, just kind right. of going with with like going with the flow. Very, very Pisces energy. Mm. But this time Bosco is like, I guess probably she, she almost went home. That's what it is. I yeah. was gonna say, I feel like she wants to prove herself. So she yeah. wants that starring role. Yeah, but yeah. also Lady Camden, because you know, she is British. Yes. And the British are normally very proper. And very lovely. They're very lovely. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, Brit, Brit, us British folk, we, we, we normally don't get so um, upset or, mm -hmm. or, or dig in, but mm. she's really doing it. Yes, she absolutely is. But can I hear your British accent? It's horrible. <laughs> do it, girl, do it! Literally all my British friends says, you're no longer my friends after I did it. <laughs> Only when I'm drunk, I'm like... <laughs> pop, pop open the telly. <laughs> That's all I can do. I don't even know. Oh my God. I, I'm not even speaking English at this point. <laughs> so Bosco wants everyone to vote. Yeah. Lady Cannon wants to do like a blind uh, voting thing. And mm -hmm. Bosco's like, no. Mm -hmm. I want to see. I want to see. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love, I it. love mm -hmm. it. It's so juicy. <laughs> I love. Okay, this is, this is why I'm always on a journey with Diabetes. Because mm -hmm. I like how she is just there stirring the pot, girl. Mm -hmm. Just stirring the pot. She, I feel like Di would have voted for Lady Camden. Mm -hmm. But just for the drama, she's like, I want Bosco to do it. And she did it before Will. Willow. I before Willow. So that it's all on Willow now. I love it. Mm -hmm. Putting Willow, who is who has proven to be a very strategic player, very. but she doesn't want to be the one to pull the trigger. And yeah. I, I love that. I love that Willow hates it because it just makes this all just juicier. Oh yeah, she put her in that spot. Daya goes on to say that compromising is for losers. Mm. Do you agree? There ain't no such thing as a friend in a competition. Right. Mm. Right. As I found out. <laughs> I am about to say, as you know. <laughs> no, but outside it's fine. But in the competition, you got to do you. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing. Why would you compromise? Because, oh, I love my friend. And then you end up doing something stupid. And, then, and, and then, you get sent home. And then you go home. Then All you, that money wasted. Then you be looking bald-headed and confused mm -hmm. on your flight back home. Like, what, what, what happened? True that. No, absolutely not. I agree. There's no compromise. Mm -mm. So there are only seven girls left. Mm. So there's a lot of tension. Do you mm. think that this is where the queens start to build like, I want to go to the end, so I'll do whatever it takes? For sure. Right? One away from top five. Yeah. So obviously, people are starting to show their colors, and I think it is great, and it's delicious. Yeah. Now they vote, mm. like we said, and mm. Bosco gets the role that she wants, and Lady Camden gets the one that she did not want. Mm. Do you think not getting the role you want, like losing your role can like make you lose motivation? For sure, but I feel like she has such good training. Yeah. She could possibly do it yeah. or completely 
fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. There, there is no middle ground here for me. So the queens now have to choreograph their number, mm. and they find out that the guest director is Leslie Jordan. Right, isn't he Will so and Grace. cute? So Will and Grace. lovely, so cute. Mm -hmm. He's like the epitome of camp. I know, mm -hmm. such a camp little man. <laughs> so cute, so yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. And I love how he says that he was doing drag before RuPaul, and his name Baby was Baby Wipes. <laughs> Baby wife, that is such a cute name. Adorable. And now we see the girls doing the choreo. And this is, uh, I always find this part interesting because you mm. see who has a dancing background and who struggles. Yes. Do you find yourself as more of a Lady Camden or an Angeria who needs to um, make up words to help her learn the choreo? I'm a dancer, so I don't need no words. But, but it does help. I think that trick was amazing because when, when dancers, when we dance, we ka, ka, boom, pa, pa. Yeah. So it's very like that language that it sills into your brain. Uh -huh. Nigeria is struggling, I would say. I know! For me, for me. And she's so talented, so I'm like, please don't go home. Yeah, yeah. So as the ladies are getting ready, Georges announces that she hates musicals. And I'm like, girl, do you What? Want I know! This is our thing! I know! Don't you dare say that! I'm like, girl, these theater gays are going to end her. Nah. They're gonna, uh, uh, Georges will be Olivia Pope. She will, they will erase her from, from queer existence. Cancellation. Girl! <laughs> the Broadway gays are serious about this They gonna get, Georges, I'm sorry to that woman. Girl, it's a wrap. That's all right, the Broadway gays are not having it, honey. <laughs> but Georgia, she also mentioned that her dancing skills, that she's self-taught, and she learned by watching Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's how I learned my dance as well. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it really? It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Do you think I can learn how to dance by watching martial arts? You should try it. I think if I learn, it will be um, that Jackie Chan movie when he was the drunken fist. That would be me dancing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, girl, that's me. And I have to say, I'm noticing how quiet the workroom is now that Jasmine is gone. You know the bitch can't stop talking. I kind of miss Jasmine's energy. Mm. She's a little chaotic, mm. a little cantankerous. Cantankerous? Yes, yeah, cantankerous. Is that our new word I'm learning today? Yes, honey, cantankerous. Tell me what it means. It means like rowdy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jasmine has a little bit of a cantankerous energy. Tankerous, you learn a new word today. Yes, Webster, but make a gag. <laughs> Tankerous. <laughs> okay, Pangina. Yes? Let's talk about the Mulan Rouge. Uh-huh. I want to do that challenge so bad. Right? I want to do it so, so bad. It's so fun. It's so fun. It's like a mashup of really great songs by Rue, but it's done so that it fits the theme. Girl. You see moments of the music video. You see moments of the inspiration from the movie. Yes, and the musical too. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to keep it 100. Mm. You know, oftentimes the musicals come out and I'm like, Really? And y'all know too, so don't 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 be watching the video acting like y'all don't see it too. But this one was definitely a serve. It was so good. Who were your standouts? Who really stood out to you? Oh, Lady Camden, for sure. She was the main one that strung the lines together of the whole entire yeah. Yeah. musical. I thought she was elegant. I thought she was poised. She danced the house down. Her characterization was impeccable. And the other one, I would have to say, was all in the middle. Yeah. So she was above the rest. Mm -hmm. And the rest, it was like, okay, she's good. Okay, yeah. she's good. Okay, she's good. Okay, she's good. So there were moments here and there where, where the rest of the cast mm -hmm. were great, but she's a standout for me. No one, no one was afoot. No one, you were like, oh God, why the f is she? Like, no one like Asia or Harriet in, in the Cher Rusical. You know what I mean? Okay. That's not shade. She was bad. We all know she was bad. <laughs> we all know it was bad. I really enjoyed Deja Sky. Mm, mm. Maybe it's because she did the little Kim part, and everybody wants to be the little Kim part. Right. So maybe that's why I gravitated towards it. Mm -hmm. And I did also like Diabetes part as well. Mm. Yeah, sure. and the movements were so sharp in both those performances. Yes. Clean. Yeah. Very clean. Yeah. Yeah, I was very impressed by Deja for sure. Mm. Who struggled the most? Angeria. Angeria, yeah. Angeria, I would lost. say. And don't kill me, I love Willow. For me, I thought she did the choreo backwards. Let's be real. Both times. Both times. Both times. Don't tell me they choreographed it differently because I felt all the dancers were doing a, d a different thing. That's how I felt. That's why I like Pangina. Pangina is here to keep it real. I agree. You have this solo part. This is your chance to feel the scene and, it and nail it. And it was flat. It was flat. It was very long. Yes. And you don't want to ever have the feeling of like, 
it's been long. And the original was Kylie Minogue. And for that 10 seconds that Kylie was in, it awoke my gay uh, uh, spiritual experience. <laughs> so for me, I was like, this is quite long, you yeah. know, unfortunately. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. What part would you have wanted to be? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I would love Saltine. Saltine is fun. Yeah. But seeing how Lady Camden that did that role, I wanted to do Lady Camden's role because I'm inspired now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I would say Willow. I would have loved to do Willow. I would have loved to have all that time to be backstage by myself mm. and like come in and nail it. Mm. And everyone would be like, ah, that's, I would have loved to do Willow's part. All right, let's get to the runway, shall we? Yes. Category is Mira Mira on the wall. Do you like this theme? I do, but I'm hoping there to be some mirrors. I know. Sorry. Okay. Let, let's. Okay. Feel free to be pissed off at me at any point. <laughs> mirrors means reflection. Uh huh. You gotta see some kind of reflection. And for me, when the light or the laser beam hits it and it reflects off completely, that's a mirror. Yeah, that's a mirror. Yeah. So a lot of them were iridescent. Miss the mark. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. All right. First up, let's talk about the Lady Camden. Mm-hmm. Ethereal. It was very ethereal. Magical. The makeup is there the makeup. for me. I like that she did like a, so a harsh makeup change. Specific yeah. with that faded lip. Uh -huh. I love it. For me, it was elevated. Yeah. And it's quite reflective, the material on yeah. her headpiece and on her body. So I I give it, I give it everything I have. Let's talk about Bosco. This is the fourth week in a row, this same silhouette on Bosco. I got so mad, my wig start popping. <laughs> if you're doing the same silhouette with a different material, that bores me and that pisses me off a little bit. And I love Bosco. Same. Just don't make three runways with the same silhouette. Uh-uh. Even though how cool this look is, we're bored. And it's not even a mirror. Yeah. It's metal. This is metal. This is reflective, sure, but it's, yeah. it doesn't hit the mark for me, unfortunately. She does a great, but we're bored. Let's talk about Willow Pill. Willow! This week, I didn't enjoy this look as yeah. much because, number one, this material, when it's done in a particular way, it can look very Halloween costume -y. Yes. And when I look at this, it was like, okay, it's 70s, but if it was the 70s, the bell-bottom pants has to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was trying to be camp and fashion, but not being one of each. Yeah. Like, it's not hitting it. Yeah. What do you I, think? I, I agree. I, this does not say mirror, mirror to me. Mm -mm. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what the 4th of July has to do with mirrors. I, also, the red lip, for some reason, the red lip was so offensive to me in this look. I don't know why. <laughs> Offensive? I don't know it offended me. The red lip offended me. Up next, Angeria. This is not it for me. And y'all know I have been loving my Angeria. If she wore this for the promo of All Stars 4, nailed it. But this is the Mirror Mirror runway on season 14. And it's supposed to be nude illusion. Bitch, I'm gonna nude delusion. It doesn't look right. Here's the thing. I felt like the idea was there, but if the material was changed with actual mirrors, bitch! Holy crap! Bitch. It would, she would. Oh my god! It would have hit it out of the ballpark. Slam dunk. I can't wait for her to call me an ugly bitch to my face. <laughs> Let's talk about Miss Daya Betty. Mm -hmm. Daya Betty. Daya Betty. I'm excited about this. Yes, I like this look. There's a Kiss reference. Gene Simmons. Yes, I feel like, okay, the cape, I could have appreciated being longer yeah. because it felt very um, knee length, I would say. It just would have been more grand if the cape was longer, but I'm not mad about it. It was very reflective, yeah. did the assignment, yeah. and it looked very fashion to me. I will say, I love this look. I mm. love that she hit all the marks. It's mm. reflected in the mirror. Mm. The only thing for me and Daya, Daya always goes so hard. It's always this like really robust, hard look. I would like mm. to see Daya be a little softer. Soft. Daya would have come in like a beautiful mirrored gown or yes. just to change it up a little bit. I would have yes. really, really like fallen out of my seat. You know what? I think next week maybe she can be soft and come as baby wipes. <laughs> that would be amazing. I will let her wipe my baby. <laughs> okay. That didn't quite work. Okay, um, <laughs> let's go to Miss Deja Sky. De oh my God. <laughs> what is okay. this? Okay, the crown reminds me of, and I'm so sorry, but like a fast food restaurant that they make up. Um, Burger King. A Burger King, a crown Bitch. of paper. She wish I was a Burger King crown, okay? We love burgers, I love burgers. You like burgers? I put everything in my mouth, but not that crown. <laughs> the thing that I felt like this was just so far off the mark, because when you said mirror, mirror for me, this is not, even close. Girl. The detail of it, 
kind of reminds me of Fifth Element. Lilu. Oh, my Lilu. Lilu. Multipass. Yes, multipass. Uh -huh. Yes. But the problem is that it looked like an oversized necktie that ended up as a penis. Oh, my God. So yeah. for me, I, I wasn't loving it. I can appreciate the concept of it, but. This is. This is Mama not my Tasia, favorite. and she did so well in the challenge. I know she, she killed did so it. Well in the challenge. So you see, that was a compliment. <laughs> you know what I like about this look? I like her conviction to wear it. I like that Deja pulled us out of her bag, and she was like, "I'm gonna wear this," and I like that she feels good in it. She is brave. Yeah, yeah, so brave. You know. We should be convicted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to last but not least, Georgia. See, this is where I disagree with you, but you go first. So Georgia, as we know, is 5'2", and her wearing these thigh-high boots with the thigh-high gloves, that's what she's trying to do, but it makes her look so teeny-weeny. Mm. Had Georgia's had a, a pump on, like a silver pump on to match the thing, it would have elongated her so much and right. made it look a little more appealing to me. I do like the silhouette. Uh -huh. I know the reference. I, I, I love, I want to, bitch, I want to get a costume made like this. Yes. I love the hair as well. I love that hair, hair by the way. So that looks cute. so sickening and so fashionable. Yeah. But I completely agree with you with the length. The shoe could have had like um like been a high pump and it would have made her taller. So tall. For sure. And the reference from me, I was getting Miley Cyrus Midnight Sky. Very, oh, very clear. Yeah. Very midnight sky. T, 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 T. The hair and the dress. I like this look. Yeah. I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. Yeah. What would you do for this theme? The good thing that I love about mirrors is that it reflects light and it distracts people from my face. So I really do feel like I want to have as much mirrors as possible, but I would have done some kind of a laser um, trick. Who had your favorite look? Lady Camden. Lady Camden. Lady Camden, for sure. And... Lady Camden. And Lady Camden. That's it, <laughs> for me. Lady Camden. For me. What about your least favorite? There were several. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I would have to say... Deja Sky. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with Deja Sky. And I would have to unfortunately say Angeria and Willow is there too, and also Bosco. Why? Is that being mean? So during the judges' critiques, we finally get the iconic drag race question, which I love. Who should go home tonight and why? So what do you think loaded. about this question? Do you I love it? Love and hate it. I love when they all pile on one girl, mm -hmm. and this is no different. And of course, Lady Camden is the first one they ask. I know it tasted so sweet coming out of her mouth to say Bosco as to what happened. Oh, like when syrup. She was in the rolls. Mm. You know, she loved it. She's like, Mwah! Bosco. She mm. says Bosco. And everyone says Bosco except for Bosco, who says Georges. I was dying with what Georges said. Bitch! Afterwards. Bitch! That was. Classic oh. library opened burnation. <laughs> like, I cannot <laughs> believe <laughs> that she said that, well, she lip synced the most within an episode. Yeah, honestly, it made me stand Georgia's tone. I was like, bitch, work. Do you think Bosco is feeling insecure? Bosco's feeling bad? How do you think Bosco feels right now? I think at this point, Bosco feels very vulnerable. Yeah. And I feel like this is the moment that she wanted to prove herself after yeah. the last episode, and this is just kicking her down again, this might be the time Bosco's gonna go home. Yeah. Like, it's, you can see it in her face. Oh, she's defeated. After judges' critiques, we mm. find out that the Lady Camden has won this challenge, securing her second win this season. Was she the right winner? Hell yeah. Yeah, she was. Obviously. And in the bottom two are Bosco and Georges, who just <laughs> came at each other hard body for the who should go home and why. Mm. Is this the right bottom two for you? No. Ooh. Bosco, I agreed Ooh. with. Georges, I didn't think she was the worst. Uh -huh. Who I think the bottom, other bottom two should have been Willow. Say, uh -oh. oh, I was gonna say, okay, Willow, sure. I don't know who you're gonna say. Bosco with Willow and Angeria. Oh, so th three bottoms. Oh, <laughs> Thailand rules. Well, <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> so Bosco and Georges are the bottom two, uh -huh. and they lip sync to Whitney Houston's Heartbreak Hotel, the Hex Hector remix. They've been doing a lot of Hex Hector remixes of this season. Do you like that, those remixes? Hell yeah. Right? They're good. Every time your Molly is about to drop, this is when this song comes on the club, and you are sweating, you're taking your clothes off, but you are leaving. It's, it's fierce. A Molly is a fish, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because we bring our fish to the clubs, <laughs> and we drop them all at the same time. Oh, you're to oh, oh. <laughs> that was my twenties. <laughs> Bitch, you are. You're not in your twenties. I can be. My IQ is. <laughs> what do you think of this lip sync? I honestly think Georges won. 
because in the beginning they were very similar. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, you can go both ways, and then. Bosco is such a good dancer, but then at the end, I felt like her body wasn't being controlled. She was trying so hard that she yeah. lost control of her body. But Georges was the whole time in it. Those yeah. little movements and that pa, the bitch, pa, pa, pa. pa. I, was I was like, like the bitch. Girl, she's channeling the spirit of Mary J. Blige. Uh -huh. Very Mary J. Living. Yes. Hey, Georges has figured it out. So Georges wins another lip sync. Who do you think can beat Georges in the lip sync? Oh, Lord. Um, I, I don't think know about who. It. Even Lady Camden. Oh, you think Lady Camden can? Possibly. Depends on the song. I know, but we've seen that both of them, like even when Georges has a, a dancing song or um, the something got a hold on me, she still has found a way to make it dynamic and still do a good lip sync. So true. she's not just a dancer, she can do other stuff. That's true. It's just scary. She is scary. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. But girl. What? All is not lost for Bosco. She still has the chance to open her chocolate bell. Oh. And is it gonna happen? Bosco, she pulls up the bar. Yeah. She unravels it. Uh. And it's gold! Ah! How do you think Bosco feels in this moment that she is saved by the golden bar? I mean, I would love to know how that feels like, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy for her. She gets another chance to prove herself, and I'm sure she's over the moon. So I have to ask Miss Pangina. Yes. Who do you see winning this competition? <laughs> Willow Peel. Willow Peel. Willow Peel. All right. And you? Me? I'm going to say Lady Camden. Pangina, it's been an absolute treat experiencing your Pangina here in North America. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the Pit Stop, for real. Thank we love you, you so much. Love As you can see, Rue just walked to his trailer. And we, Rue, coffee? Chocolate, please. And thank you to all of you for watching The Pit Stop. We'll be back next week with episode 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 14. Thank you. Mwah. And Drew is that a rare breed of black people that don't have good rhythm, like, <laughs> like a Bob. Like a Monique. Uh-huh. You know, like they they they, uh, they struggle with, with, with rhythm a little bit. You said that I did? I sure did, girl. <laughs> Angel O'Hara. Oh, okay. I'm like, they are not invited to the cookout. They just they can stay home. <laughs> and then <laughs> Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay shit? Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.